So are you telling me that nothing happened in the basement that before you went, that nothing happened to her in that basement on June 11th? Oto Samantha Kimacz, która przez pięć krótkich lat życia swojej córeczki Phoenix traktowała ją jak kompletnego śmiecia. Dziewczynka była przerzucana między domami zastępczymi, znajomymi oraz członkami rodziny, zanim ostatecznie zamieszkała na stałe z matką i jej chłopakiem, Karlem Wesleyem McKayem. Tak zaczął się jej koszmar. Oboje znęcali się nad nią psychicznie i fizycznie, głodząc i przetrzymując w zimnej piwnicy, aż wreszcie dopuszczając się pobicia ze skutkiem śmiertelnym. To jest Phoenix Sinclair. Dziewczynka urodziła się 23 kwietnia 2000 roku w Kanadzie. Phoenix uwielbiała oglądać filmy i bawić się na zewnątrz ze swoimi ulubionymi zabawkami. Była bardzo mądrym dzieckiem, nauczyła się mówić dużo wcześniej niż inne dzieci w jej wieku. Niestety, życie Phoenix zostało jej odebrane niedługo po piątych urodzinach. A oto Steve Sinclair, biologiczny ojciec Phoenix oraz pierwszego dziecka, jakie urodziła Samantha. Z powodu problemów z przemocą i nadużywaniem alkoholu pierwsze dziecko zostało odebrane przez służby niedługo po narodzinach Phoenix. Historia zaniedbań sprawiła, że opieka społeczna automatycznie zainteresowała się losem także maleńkiej Phoenix. W ich domu pracownicy socjalni odkryli, że rodzice nie kupili łóżeczka ani żadnych innych rzeczy niezbędnych dla niemowląt i stwierdzili, że nie są w stanie sprawować opieki w należyty sposób. Samantha patrzyła bez emocji, gdy opieka społeczna zabrała jej nową narodzoną córkę i umieściła w domu zastępczym. Rodzicom postawiono warunki, aby mogli odzyskać opiekę nad córką, jednakże okazali oni początkowo kompletny brak zainteresowania – i Feniks została w rodzinie zastępczej do swoich pierwszych urodzin. Po tym czasie opiekę nad nią zaczęli ponownie sprawować Samantha i Steve. W 2001 roku na świat przychodzi trzecie dziecko pary, córka Iko. Zaraz po tym związek Samanty i Steve'a się rozpada. Początkowo Samantha zabiera ze sobą Iko, jednak po niedługim czasie dzwoni do byłego partnera, aby ją odebrał. Od tego czasu Steve Sinclair zaczął sam sprawować opiekę nad Phoenix i Echo. Niestety, z powodu problemów z oddychaniem, Echo nagle umiera. Miała zaledwie 4 miesiące. Kiedy Samantha dowiedziała się o śmierci córki, wściekła się i zażądała, aby Phoenix została jej oddana. Z kolei śmierć córki sprawiła, że Steve zaczął pić więcej niż zwykle i bez poinformowania opiekunów społecznych Zostawił Phoenix u swoich znajomych, Kim Edwards i Rohan Stevenson. Ron i Kim bardzo polubili Phoenix i traktowali ją jak członka rodziny. Phoenix pozostawała pod opieką pary przez dwa lata. W tym czasie Samantha okazjonalnie ją odwiedzała i zabierała do siebie na krótki czas. Ron później powiedział, że Phoenix zachowywała się inaczej, gdy wracała od swojej matki, i raz Samantha przywiozła ją ze wszami we włosach. To nie był jedyny problem, z jakim w międzyczasie musiała borykać się Phoenix. W lutym 2003 roku została ona przyjęta do szpitala z poważną infekcją spowodowaną kawałkiem steropianu, który utknął w jej nosie na trzy miesiące. W czerwcu następnego roku pracownicy socjalni zabrali Phoenix z domu Steve'a, po tym jak ten zorganizował całodniową imprezę. Powiedziano mu, że musi poddać się leczeniu odwykowemu od alkoholu, aby odzyskać Phoenix, ale nigdy się na to nie zdecydował. W grudniu 2003 roku Samantha poznaje Karla Wesleya McKeya, znanego jako Wes. Gdy Wes składa propozycję, aby Samantha się do niego wprowadziła, ta widzi w tym okazję na odzyskanie Phoenix. W kwietniu 2004 roku gdy Phoenix przebywa u Kim i Rona, Samantha niespodziewanie pojawia się z matką, zamierzając zabrać córkę do domu. Ostatecznie pozwolono jej zabrać dziecko, zakładając, że prawdopodobnie Phoenix wróci za kilka dni, jak zwykle. Tym razem to się nie wydarzyło. 13 lipca 2004 roku pracownicy socjalni odwiedzają mieszkanie McKeya i Kimacz. Sprawdzili warunki, w których Phoenix mieszkała, 
i nie mieli żadnych zastrzeżeń. Jednak nie sprawdzili przeszłości osoby, z którą dziewczynka miała teraz żyć, Wesa. Gdyby to zrobili, odkryliby długą listę przestępstw, jakich się dopuścił w przeszłości. Trzy z nich dotyczyły napaści, w tym jedna z użyciem niebezpiecznego narzędzia. Otrzymał zakaz zbliżania się do byłej partnerki, a jego dwójka dzieci pozostawała pod stałą kontrolą opieki społecznej. Ze względu na skłonność do przemocy, Carl Wesley McKay stanowił oczywiste zagrożenie dla dzieci zarówno pośrednio, jak i bezpośrednio. Tymczasem 30 listopada 2004 roku Samantha urodziła kolejną córkę. Tym razem ojcem był Wes. Jak wykazały późniejsze zeznania, wielu znajomych pary było zaniepokojonych traktowaniem Phoenix, szczególnie po narodzinach nowego dziecka. Jedna z przyjaciółek zauważyła siniak na twarzy Phoenix. Dziewczynka była traktowana jak służąca, a jej matka zmuszała ją do wykonywania wszystkich obowiązków domowych. Jeśli pięcioletnia Phoenix nie posprzątała czegoś, jej matka wyzywała ją, głodziła, a raz nawet ogoliła jej głowę, aby wyglądała jak chłopiec. W kwietniu 2005 roku McKay i Kimacz przeprowadzili się do domu na północ od Winnipeg. Mieszkali tam razem z Phoenix, ich wspólnym dzieckiem, dwunastoletnim Danielem, synem Wesa z poprzedniego związku oraz innym czternastoletnim synem Wesa, który czasami tam nocował. Gdy Daniel zamieszkał z ojcem i Samantą, zeznał, że Phoenix była zamykana w piwnicy i bita rurą, miotłą oraz uchwytem od lodówki. Ale to nie były jedyne okrucieństwa, których doświadczyła dziewczynka. Chłopiec opowiedział o makabrycznej grze, którą McKay nazywał kurczakiem. Polegała ona na chwytaniu Phoenix za gardło i podnoszeniu jej w powietrze, aż do momentu utraty przytomności. Następnie rzucał ją na ziemię i czekał, aż się ocknie. To była jedna z ulubionych zabaw Karla. W rzadkich momentach, gdy Phoenix mogła bawić się na zewnątrz, Karl strzelał do niej z wiatrówki, podczas gdy dziewczynka płacząc próbowała unikać nadlatujących pocisków. Przez długi czas Phoenix znosiła tę gehennę, aż do dnia, w którym wytrzymałość jej małego ciała się wyczerpała. 11 czerwca 2005 roku, według zeznań syna McKaya, Phoenix zginęła będąc brutalnie pobitą w piwnicy ich domu. Według chłopca bił ją McKay, podczas gdy Samantha Kimacz siedziała na schodach i wszystkiemu się przyglądała. Pewnego dnia, siedem miesięcy po śmierci Phoenix, zrozpaczony Daniel postanowił o wszystkim opowiedzieć swojej biologicznej matce, która natychmiast zgłosiła sprawę służbom. Kiedy policja i pracownicy socjalni przybyli do domu Samanty, aby sprawdzić, jak czuje się jej pięcioletnia córka, Kimacz pokazała im małą dziewczynkę, twierdząc, że to jest właśnie Phoenix. Jednak służby wiedziały, że to zwykłe kłamstwo. Samantha i Karl zostali aresztowani i doprowadzeni na przesłuchanie. Jak się później okazało, po śmierci Phoenix była ona nadal zgłaszana przez Samantę do opieki społecznej, aby podtrzymać ciągłość wypłacania świadczeń socjalnych. Znajomym, którzy się niepokoili jej długą nieobecnością, mówiła, że córka została odebrana przez opiekę społeczną. Karl oraz Samantha zostali przesłuchani na podstawie zeznań Daniela. Detektywi, pomimo tak twardych dowodów, potrzebowali jednak jeszcze ich przyznania się do winy oraz wskazania miejsca, w którym ukryte zostały zwłoki dziewczynki. Zaraz zobaczycie materiał z przesłuchań. You done very well, Sam. You done a good thing here, and I appreciate you being honest with me and telling the truth. You did the right thing. There's um a couple things that we talked about that I'm a little bit confused on though, because I I feel like I kind of have two different stories about it. So I want to make sure I got it right and get the truth about what happened. Okay. The part that you and I talked about that day uh, when Phoenix died, you were telling me about what you think killed her in the basement. Um, can you explain that again? Because you explained it one part, but you had talked before about it and it's kind of different. So I want to make sure I got it right. So I want you to talk to me about 
the morning um, or that the day that you guys were at home when Phoenix died before you went to Wes's dad's she house? Was, she was okay. She was breathing. Okay. And I, and that's what you told me. But when I had asked you about what it is when that you think came, killed her. Yeah, when we came back, I said it looked like she, she choked on a puke. That's what I said. That looks like me. That she might have died from choking on a puke. Right. There was a puke spot there. But then we talked about what happened down there. Yeah. And that's where I'm confused. Is the time when you talked about the puke, but then you also talked about Phoenix being thrown across the floor. Or thrown onto the floor, banging her head. Yeah, that was the day before. Okay, so that's where I'm confused about. As what day, what thing happened? Mm -hmm. So, the, the, like, what do you mean? Like, the day before she died. So we 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 know she died on June 11th, right? Mm -hmm. So on June 10th, what happened that day? What happened to her that day? Those things you were telling me about? That's the day I was pushed her. She banged her head on the floor. Okay. That's what I said. She banged her head on the floor. Right. Was pushed her. See, I thought you said that that was the day that she died. No. Okay. So this is why I want to talk to make sure I've got it right. Because there was parts that confused me about that. So on June 10th, the day before... That's when he threw her and she hit her head on the floor. Okay, so what else happened that day? Now, you had told me about hitting her in the leg a couple times with the, that bar, that pipe. I think you call it a bar, maybe? A pole. Yeah. So, did you hit her? with that, that thing that day, the same day that he pushed her and she hit her head? Okay, so what day did that you hit? That was a different day. I don't know what day that was, but that was a different day. I know that wasn't the day before she died. Okay. It was just a different day. Okay, now the day that she died, you had talked about leaving with Wes to go to his dad's. Mm -hmm. And then you came back because Daniel phoned because she wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. Well, before you guys left, before you went to his dad's, what happened in the basement? I need you to talk to me about that again. Nothing happened in the basement. Like, what do you mean? Like, something like... Like, what do you mean, like, how it happened? Well, we talked about... She, there's nothing that happened. She was... She was breathing. She was all right to me when... Before I left. Okay, she, so... She was, she was laying there, yeah, but she, she was breathing. And when you say she was laying there, where was she laying? On the floor. In a basement? Yeah. Okay, and that's the last time you saw her? Yeah. And how do you know she was breathing? Because I checked her. Okay, what, why did you think you had to check her to see if she was breathing before you left? What had happened? Because I had just, I always checked on her. I just checked, it was just something like, I don't know why, I just did. Okay, because we had talked before. And you had suggested to me that Phoenix died because she choked on her puke? Mm -hmm. That might have been, I said. Okay. I don't believe that's true, and I don't think you do either. After we had talked about that, and I asked you, what do you really think killed her? And you told me that it will probably be an injury to her head. Well, mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So when you had talked to me about how she got that injury... What day did that injury happen? On June 10th. And how do you know that? Because I remember that was the day. 
I remember thinking maybe, maybe that's how she died, I was thinking. So I thought maybe that's how, maybe that's why she died, maybe because she had an injury to her head because maybe, because when she fell. Okay. So. Maybe that was what happened. So was there anything wrong with her on June 11th that would make you think that she was still hurt from the day before? Um, because so. Wes said that he told her. No, he didn't tell her. He said that she said she that she couldn't that she couldn't that she wasn't hungry hungry or she couldn't or she couldn't come up she couldn't come upstairs. He said he asked her to come upstairs. She said she couldn't come upstairs. Why couldn't she come upstairs? I don't know. He didn't say why. She didn't say why, he said. All he said was that she said she couldn't come upstairs. So what happened? on the morning of June 11th that hurt her where she couldn't come upstairs? Exam, you know, and I know I'm that something- to rem remember it. And So when you said that you went to check on her, yeah, well, I <clears> checked on her. She was okay and breathing. Now she was breathing, but was yeah. she beaten up? Was she hurt? I think maybe she was hurt. Okay. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't tell like, because. Like she was just laying there and she was breathing. Just like when somebody's just laying there. No, when somebody's just laying down. Okay, so you... She was okay though when I looked at her. Okay, so she was alive, you say, when you looked at her. Now, when you think she was kind of hurt, what made you think she was hurt? I was thinking maybe, thinking maybe because of her head maybe, I was wondering about that. Okay, and so are you telling me that nothing happened in the basement that before you went, that nothing happened to her in that basement on June 11th? Because you had said before that you weren't the one that beat her. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, who beat her? And you said it was Wes. Yeah. And we were talking about that day. Mm -hmm. I said he beat her. But, but like, I said 
so he beat her. She. All I want you to do, Sam, is tell me the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't beat her. Okay, and I'm not saying that you did. I'm asking you to tell me the truth about what happened before you went to his dad's house that day. I don't... Yeah, I checked on her. She was okay. She was breathing. Did somebody beat her that morning? Or earlier in the day before you went to his dad's, did somebody beat her? Like from the time we were gone and the time we got back? No, from before you went. You and Wes were still home, Daniel was there, and Phoenix was there. Before you and Wes left, Oh, yeah, I said, uh, yeah, I said Wes beat her, but I didn't say he beat her that day. I'm talking about the day before. Okay, I want to know what happened that day. That day. I think, I think that they... I think he told her to have a shower that day. The morning, I'm not sure. Because I'm thinking of another day. But I don't... Did Phoenix get hit before you and Wes went to his dad's? I'm not sure. I never, I never hit her though. I didn't hit her. Was Wes downstairs with her before you left? He was down there with her. And what was he doing down there? I'm not sure. That's when after he told me that she didn't want to, and she said she couldn't come upstairs. Okay, so he was downstairs with her. He came up, and that's when he told you she said she can't come upstairs? He told me, yeah, she couldn't come upstairs. He asked her. He said he asked her to come upstairs and eat, yeah, to eat, and she said she couldn't. Okay. So then, is, did you go downstairs and check on her? No. So after he came up and said she can't come up and eat, what happened? I didn't think anything. So maybe she was just too lazy or just tired to, or she just didn't want to. Okay. Because that's how she, sometimes she wouldn't want to eat. Sometimes. Okay. So then you went and checked on her before you left? Yeah, I checked on her before I just went down there. Okay, so did you see her again after Wes had come up and said, you know, I asked her to come and she said she doesn't want to? Did you see her again after that? No. Okay, so then you guys went to his dad's? And is that when Daniel called? He called after his dad. And what did he say? Wes talked to me. Okay. So when Wes got off the phone, what did he tell you? He just said, okay, then we'll see you later. We're gonna go home now. Did he tell you why? And then when we got in the car, 
So wipe down your cold. So because she's not breathing. Okay. And I felt like I got scared and I didn't. So that when you got home, what is the first thing you did when you got back home? Went downstairs. And what did you see when you went down there? She was laying there. Where in the basement was she laying? Mm -hmm. On the floor. On the floor by the... By the... I don't know, like on the left, like when you come down the stairs. Mm -hmm. This way, kind of by the wall. Okay. Is there any windows in the basement there? Yeah. So from where the window is, where was she laying? Like where in the basement, when you come down the stairs, where is the window? The window is over here. So it's to your left? To the left by the, by the wall. Okay. So where was Phoenix laying? Like in relation to the window, it was like kind of really the same. Was she near the same wall as the window? No, it was like um. How do you explain it? Was she near a wall or in the middle of the floor? She was kind of, kind of, kind of in the middle of the floor. There was. There was things. There was. There's, yeah, there's, there's been like furniture by the wall there. Okay. Like what kind of furniture was down there? There was a washer and dryer and couches and, um, Just, uh, the wall unit. Okay, so from where the washer and dryer is, where was Phoenix? Like, if you like think the washer and dryer was that, like that was junk that was down there. Oh, okay, they weren't hooked up. No. Okay. Okay, so you went downstairs and she's laying on the floor. Um, how was she laying? She was laying on. She was laying on her. Her back. Okay. Did she have any clothes on? No. So when you guys went down there and you found her naked laying on her back, is that when you said that Wes tried CPR? Okay, and then that's when it got into where you went to get garbage bags and you guys wrapped her and we talked about that already. We talked about stuff like that already, yeah. Yeah. Now one thing we haven't talked about that... Sorry, go ahead. We, we, we did like, like I told you, we didn't wrap her up right away. We didn't wrap her up. Oh. No. So, how long did you wait to wrap her up? I, t I told you already. I think you said before it was maybe a couple hours, right? Yeah. It was, it was something that wasn't supposed to happen. Ostatecznie, przesłuchanie Samanty nie dostarcza kluczowych informacji dla sprawy. Detektyw nie otrzymuje żadnych przełomowych informacji. Samanta nie przyznała się do winy, ponadto nie obciążyła zadaniami Karla. 
Zeznania Daniela wskazują, że choć Kimacz nie była sprawczynią fizycznych ran, które doprowadziły do śmierci Phoenix, to jednak biernie się temu przyglądała i pozwoliła na maltretowanie swojej córki aż do jej śmierci. Późniejsze zeznania świadków sugerują, że Kimacz mogła namawiać do bicia swojej córki i teraz w trakcie przesłuchania celowo unika dawania precyzyjnych odpowiedzi. W późniejszym wywiadzie stwierdzi, że wszystkie nadużycia były tylko ze strony Wesa, a ona jedynie kochała Phoenix. Jeśli to prawda, to dlaczego teraz stara się go chronić? Oboje zostali aresztowani, więc mogłaby łatwo zeznać, że to Wes pobił Phoenix w piwnicy, zanim udali się do domu jego ojca. Zamiast tego udziela wymijających odpowiedzi i usiłuje go osłaniać. W międzyczasie McKay jest przesłuchiwany przez innego detektywa. Ten śledczy stosuje inną strategię. Zamiast pytać Karla, czy popełnił to przestępstwo, detektyw wyjaśnia mu, że wie, że zabił Phoenix i nie ma wątpliwości, że to on jest winny. Mówi Karlowi, że chce tylko wiedzieć, dlaczego to zrobił. W ten sposób chce, aby Karl poczuł, że nie ma sensu zaprzeczać oskarżeniom, ponieważ policja ma już wszystkie informacje, które są potrzebne do skazania go. W takiej sytuacji Karl może pomyśleć, że najlepszą opcją dla niego jest wyjaśnienie, dlaczego to się stało i być może stworzenie scenariusza, w którym nie wygląda na taką złą osobę. Dodatkowo, aby bardziej otworzyć Karla, detektyw decydują się na kierowanie do niego wielu komplementów. Nieustannie powtarza mu, że jest dobrym człowiekiem i posiada wartości i dlatego powinien się uwolnić od tego, co ciąży na jego sumieniu. Nie jest to proste, gdy jesteś świadomy szczegółów przestępstwa, jakie popełnił przesłuchiwany. Nawet słuchanie tego nie jest łatwe. Jednak detektyw jest doskonale przeszkolony, a strategia okazuje się skuteczna. Rozluźnia to USA i pozwala zebrać znacznie więcej informacji od tych z przesłuchania Samanty. Phoenix. She was in your life. Right? Yeah. She was in your life. But because of whatever was going on in life, pressures, medication, whatever it may be, things got a little crazy, right? Did you mean to do that to her? Did you mean to go that far? Or was it one of those situations where a nice guy made a mistake? Wesley, did you mean to do that to the Phoenix? Did you mean to do that purposely? Or was it just something that was beyond your control. Did you? Did you do that on purpose to her? Because if you did that on purpose, I can't understand. I can't understand. Did you do that to her on purpose? Or was it something that was beyond your control? Was it beyond your control? Nobody controlled it. Nobody controlled it? Who controlled it? Who controlled it, man? You're a good man. You are. Who controlled it? Huh? Who controlled it, man? She didn't have to do. She didn't. She didn't have to die like that. Harry, do you agree? Yes. It's horrible, eh? You know what? I'm glad I see you like that because you know what it tells me you have feelings. You care. I'm happy to see you like that, man. Because you care. I know you do. That's why I'm sitting here with you. You care. You do. You're a good man. It doesn't matter what anybody says you're a good man. You are. How come it happened? Just, we know it happened. We know it happened. Why did it have to happen? Hmm? I don't know. You don't know? Do you regret it? I can't think right now. I know. Do you regret what happened? Tell me you do. Do you regret what happened? I regret. Do you? Whatever I did in my old life, I regret it. Yeah. If you could change one thing in your life, what would you change right now? Right now? Huh? I know my lawyer advised me to say nothing. I know. But you know what? All the lawyers do that. And that's right. That's that's your legal obligation. But you know what? There's, you have values that that are speaking out. You have values, right? 
There's things that you need to get off your chest. And I know, that's why I sat, sat here with you this long. I know, I could have walked out right away, but I know what you're about. I know you feel bad. I can see the tears and that tells me a lot. I'm not judging you, okay? I'm not. I'm not judging you at all and I won't. I know you've had a shitty life, okay? I know you've had a shitty life and I don't expect you to be perfect. What? I just want to worry about my children. I know you do. I know you do. And you know what? I know you do, and that tells me a lot. You should be concerned. If you weren't concerned with them, if you weren't concerned about them right now, I, I, I don't know what I would think about you. I know you're concerned. You had two kids, two beautiful kids, right? Rain and Damien. They must mean the world to you, right? Yeah. They do. I know they do. I never see him again. Oh, come on. Hey, look at me. You will see them again. Don't say that. You'll see them again, okay? You know what? You've taken a big step here, okay? You've taken a monster leap. All right? That is awesome. You are, you are a decent fella, whether you think so or not, okay? Okay? Hey. Hey. I, I don't I don't have any animosity against you, okay? All right. You did a good thing, okay? Hey. Yeah. It was get it out. And then I tried to save her. Yeah, what'd you do? I tried to give a CPR. Yeah. And what happened? Put it cooked. No. That must have been hard, eh? It must have been hard. I feel for you, man. Yeah. I, that made a big mistake. I know. But you know what? I gotta pay for it, so... But you know what? You know what? You're owning up to it, right? Right? The good fellow that you are, you are owning up to it. You realized you made a mistake. Right? Yeah. You did make a mistake. You did, and you know what, and, and you're talking about it, and that's awesome, that's great. How, what, what was it that set you off that day? I mean, we all have pressures in our life, okay? Was it, was it medication? Was it stress? Was it people bothering you? Was it fear? Was it, what was it that set you off? I'm sorry? I don't know, I just... I don't know, it's, it's such a... It's, to me, it's a tragic thing. It is a tragic thing, but you're taking a first step, right? As I said earlier, today is the first day of the rest of your life, right? Okay? It's important for you. And you know what? Your family will see it as like, wow, he's, he took ownership of this. He didn't try and hide. You know what? That tells so much about your character, okay? Even though all the crap that you have been through in your whole entire life, it tells so much, it tells volumes, speaks volumes about your character. When did this happen? Hmm. When did this happen? You probably remember the date. Um, I, I'm just thinking back here. Yeah, my mother said. Yeah, take your time. She says, try not to get too involved in this relationship with Samantha. Yeah. How okay. come? She was right. How come? Because she knows, she knows her mom. Okay, your mom knows Samantha's mom? Samantha's mom. Yeah, yeah. who's that? Uh, her name is Bertha. Yeah, okay. You're shipping short of her? Or no, I'm here in the Yeah. Okay. So there's some stresses going on in your life, right? It was, uh, you know, when, when my, I first told her to come and stay with me. And, right. You know, I didn't even know she had a, had a kid. You, know? oh, you didn't know Samantha? No, I didn't know she had a kid. Oh, really? Okay. Next thing I know, you know, she I go to her mom's and her kid's there. And, right. and Is that Phoenix you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she told me that this was her kid. And right. She was staying with her mom. Right. You know, I thought myself first time that Samantha was uh, just single. I didn't know she had any kids. And, right. And, I don't know. She she wasn't very, uh, I don't know, she wasn't very 
But it was a child anyway. Samantha was? No. No, how come? I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe the anger in her or something. Yeah. And then she'd get me and, to, you know, tell her to shut up. I said, no, I'd tell her to sh shut the hell up. Put right. it in the corner or whatever. Right. There was always Samantha starting with this kid. You know, the biggest mistake was this. I mean, I can't say that she moved in the kid. The kid was like a mistake. Right. You no, know, she should have stayed with her grandparents. You know, and I, I just lived this life of me, her, and it, you know, when when I found out she was pregnant, you know, that shocked me. And yeah, I uh, I tried so hard to you know, you know, keep her happy. Right. You know, uh, but this tra tragedy has totally uh, turned my life. I bet it has. It must be weighing thin on your nerves, eh? Since then? No, oh, it's, I don't know, it's, uh... I mean, it's kind of been bugging you. It has been. Yeah? Yeah, every night. Yeah, I bet it has. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, just listen to the music. One time, yeah. I went like this, and then I heard Phoenix's name, you know? Right. Like, it's out of the blue. Right. And, uh, just kind of, you know, made me think. Yeah. When is this going to occur? You know, I was scared. I bet I you were. Scared. You know what? Yeah. Anybody in your shoes would be scared. If I would have been in your shoes, I would have, who knows, maybe I would have done the same thing. We, we don't think properly when in high stress situations, do we? We don't. <laughs> Daniel was there. Yeah. Hey, I know he was there. He was. He's so having, scared. He was having a tough time with this, man. He's having a tough time with this. I know, I told my son. Don't yeah. I know. Is there was. Yeah, I know he was. I know he was. You know, Sam was just standing there like... I'm sorry? Sam was just standing there, she's all fucking like, look like she's happy or shit now. Really? How come? I don't know. Yeah. She was, uh, I mean, it happened. Right. How did it happen? But I don't know what the hell she said to you guys. To bardzo ważny moment dla całego przesłuchania. W tej chwili detektyw ma wyśmienitą okazję, aby wykorzystać Samantę do wyciągnięcia przyznania się od Karla. Mógłby po prostu Karlowi powiedzieć, że Samantha wskazała go jako jednego winnego śmierci Phoenix. Jednakże taka taktyka mogłaby zadziałać także w drugą stronę. Mogłoby go to rozzłościć, a wtedy mógłby zacząć się bronić, oskarżając Samantę o samodzielne popełnienie zbrodni. W efekcie policja miałaby dwie osoby oskarżające się nawzajem, z prawdą leżącą gdzieś po środku. Detektyw postanawia przemilczeć to pytanie. W efekcie Karl przyznaje się, że zarówno on jak i Samantha są winni morderstwa. Yeah. Well, she talked to one of the other officers. You know, who's responsible here? You or Samantha? I don't... To me, uh, it's both of us. It's both of you? Yes. How is it... How is it both of your fault? Explain to me. I don't know. She would always tell me to... Tell that kid to keep quiet. Okay. That day, was she telling you to keep the kid quiet? Uh, no, she was downstairs. I think at the beginning she was downstairs because we were involved. Okay. To, to go see my dad. Right. So she put her kid in the corner there. Is this in the basement? In the basement. Yeah. Okay, so she she put her kid in the basement because the kid wouldn't keep quiet? Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she's a mean one. Right. Yeah. She had no heart. No way. What, I know uh, she loves, she loves my babies. I bet she does. Well, she made a mistake too. Yeah. Well, you both made mistakes. You're not perfect. Right? Yeah. I'm going to pay for this. Well... You did a good thing by talking about it though. You know that. Right? Because the good person in you... Right? The good person in you... I'm just talking about it, right? Yeah. I don't know. And you've had to keep this in for so long. I don't know how, like, I don't know how you, are you on special medication because, since that incident? Or no? No, all of a sudden. No? So, tell me, explain to me how it happened. I can't remember. Try and remember for me, okay? 
don't even remember this. The... I can't hear you. I don't even remember this. The... We just. I don't know, fucking, she put her in the corner, and she, I don't know what the fuck, and she came out of the corner, and then I looked, yeah, yeah. and then I grabbed it, I threw her on, on, on the clothes, there was a bag of clothes, I threw her on there, and I said, you know, listen to your mom, I said, so I, we went, and we left, and then Daniel called me, and she said that this little girl was a pretty good board. Yeah. Your bike came back, it sounds like that. Yeah, I know what he did. That's what Daniel said. That one, forty five or yeah, but it didn't work. And then it, we were scared. I bet you were. Then it told her, and then Sam said, "Let's let's go bury her somewhere." Okay, right. We know that. <laughs> so we were after up and we went. We buried her. Yeah, where'd you bury her? In the bush somewhere. Where? By the garbage dump. Yeah. Are you talking about uh, which garbage dump? I don't know. Somewhere you, you go up the road somewhere. It's the what garbage dump? When, when you go towards on the, I don't know if it's the south side or something. You have to grab the road. Who, who all went when you went to bury the child? Just me and Sam went. Yeah. What happened to Daniel? I told him to stay home. Yeah. I told him to move back. Yeah. So, try and explain to me. You said you buried. How deep is the body buried? It wasn't very deep. If you were to say in inches, how deep? Probably like a foot, foot and a half. Would you use to to bury? But uh, I used a shovel. Yeah. What um, what did you did you put the baby into anything? What's that? Did you put the the child into anything? Plastic. Where did you get the plastic from? It was downstairs. It was for the for the walls. Yeah. Okay. How? What vehicle did you use when you were out there? It's my car. Is that the Tempo? Yeah. Yeah? Where did you place the child in the car? In the, in the trunk. In the trunk. What time of day was this? This was in the evening. About what time? It was starting to get dark. Yeah? About nine, I guess, ten. Yeah. Years. Did you ever go back there? No. You didn't go back and look? No. Is the body still there? I don't know. Well, if you didn't go back, would it still be there? I don't know. Is there anything on top of it right now? Just soil, I guess. How about snow? Snow, yeah, there'd be snow on here, I guess. What direction in the dump? Is it right in the dump or is it down the outside? No, it's on, uh, down in, in a bush somewhere. Okay. You'd be able to take me there? Yeah. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. I just want this. Over. I know you do. I know you do. And you know what? You're doing a good thing. I know you do. You're doing a good job. I know. I'm going to spend the rest of my life in jail. Hey. Hey. Let's worry about dealing with the stuff right now, okay? Alright? Okay? Right? So it was just you and Samantha? Yeah. That went? Me and Samantha. Who's actually responsible for for causing the baby's death? I don't know. I don't know. Because I used to stack her with a behind it. And one time they fucking, she had fucking cut on her head. I said, well, who's hitting her on the head? I said. Yeah. So I, said, I don't know. Said, well, you're the only one here. Daniel wouldn't do it. Right. Well, did Samantha do anything to her that day? Yeah. She, what said, did she, she always do? beats her up. How does she beat her up? She fucking hits her. Yeah. I tried so hard not to do it, you know. I know, I know. Try so hard. Yeah. I don't want to blame all of that I know. Samantha, because, you know, we're both involved in this. I, I see her do it as my responsibility. She, you know, she saw me do this too, and I, she, it's her responsibility to Right. Me. But, so when we talk about who is responsible for causing the baby's death, was it you or was it her? I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Like I said, we got there, she was fine. And you phoned me up and said that the baby's not, the girl's not breathing. So. Right. Where were you when, when Daniel called you? Yeah, my dad's. Okay. And I drove as fast as I could and then I went right down the stairs and she was just lying there and then I tried to resuscitate her and I gave her the, because uh, I took uh, that training for uh, emergency response unit. Right. 
and uh, I was trying to revive her. Okay, but you said you, you talked about earlier that you did CPR? Yeah. Now, just explain what CPR is to me so I know that... Well, I, I, I put, uh, put her head up like this, and then I was trying to blow her mouth. Right. Look at the chest, and then um, I, I kind of gave her the, this thing here. The chest compression? Yeah, not, not too hard. But no. You know what, I, I tried and I tried to revive her again and it didn't, didn't work. No. So I don't know how long she was like that. How long did you try doing it for? About five, ten minutes. And well, it was, I couldn't do it any longer. Okay. Because it, well, where was Samantha when you were doing she was it? Standing the, uh, she was standing on the, on the steps. My son watched me do this. Okay, so did Samantha witness this? Samantha saw it too. Yeah. She seemed to try to, try to revive the little girl. Yeah. So he saw me do it this too. I tried to find her a little bit. Yeah. Where did this happen exactly? I mean, I have an idea. Okay. Which, which, where did this exactly happen in Fisher River? Yeah. And uh, we used to live at this house on uh, on a reserve. Right. And we were paying rent for it. This girl her name is uh, Angela Murdoch. It's her house. It's her house, but you were paying rent yeah. to her? Yeah. We okay. Paying rent to her. But it was a reserve house? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't it wasn't really uh, the best place to learn because uh, you can tell it was going to be cold. Right. Because those windows smashed out a bit, and we had stuff covered, plastic covering the windows. And oh, okay. All right. So did it have a house number? No, it's uh, I don't know what it had. One seventy four or something. Like One seventy four. What color was it? Uh, it's a bluish, whitish house. Blue and white. Yeah. What. And I know sometimes uh, the reserves have a road. What road was it on? What's it called? On Main Highway. Main Highway? Yep. Okay. You have Kleenex? Yeah. Kleenex? Uh, some Kleenex? We'll get you some Kleenex. There you go. Here's, uh, here's some food outside the door there. Are you interested in eating anything? Yeah. Or no? Just a little bit of Yeah? Oh. I don't know if you like McDonald's or not. It happened. Well, you know what? You can't change the facts, right? No. You're done. No, I wish it was. I know. I know. I wish it would never happen to I know you do. I know you do. Take it up when someone doesn't die. Kill anybody. But like, if nobody does, nobody does. Unless you're a serial killer, and I know you're not. Serial killers go out and do that. It's the people that make mistakes. And you're the guy that made the mistake that day. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I do feel a little better that I told you. I know you do. It takes a load off your off your shoulders. I know. <laughs> Maybe not. She can rest in peace. That's a good thing you said. Maybe she can. Maybe she can. <laughs> I hope for I hope for your sake she can. Hey. Okay? Probably not going to be all that great, Dave. Eh? It's uh, cold. But, whoops. So listen. When did this happen? You must have that day. That day must be embedded in your mind. It's June 11th. How do you remember June 11th? Because that's the day we were here. Yeah. Did you write it down somewhere? No, it's just in my head. Yeah. June 11th, what year? 2005. Okay. All right. So who knows where she's buried besides you and Samantha? Just us. Just you two? Yeah. Okay. So I don't even know why. Then. All of a sudden, I think sorry for her right at the talk. But we, did they find the body or? Mm -hmm. Well, Phoenix has disappeared, right? 
Yeah. You just put two and two together and you realize something's something's wrong, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, you're doing some silly stuff, getting other kids involved, you know, right? And I didn't want this, my son to see that. So. No, I know he didn't. Nobody wants to. I know. Przesłuchanie Karla było zdecydowanie bardziej efektywne. Detektyw, ustawiając się w roli przyjaciela, zdobył kluczowe informacje dla sprawy. Przytłoczony i bezradny wobec oskarżeń Karl zdecydował się również wskazać miejsce, gdzie zostało ukryte ciało Phoenix. Późniejszy raport z sekcji zwłok wykaże liczne złamania na całym ciele dziewczynki. Znaleziono zarówno stare, jak i całkiem nowe złamania, co dowodziło, że wcześniejsze złamania nie miały wystarczająco dużo czasu na zagajenie się. Oto nagranie z przeprowadzonej wizji lokalnej. The date is uh, March 17th, the year 2006. The time right now is um, 9.46 p.m. We're out at the uh, Fisher uh, River. Um, we're just past the garbage dump road here. Um, I'm uh, just for the record, I'm Corporal Norm Shred of the Serious Crimes Unit of the RCMP and uh, Constable Bobby Baker. And uh, operating the camera is Corporal Randy Hooker of the Winnipeg Forensic Ident Section. Um, <clears throat> we are leaving the garbage dump road, uh, and Wesley, Carl Wesley McKay, is going to take us to where Phoenix Sinclair is buried. Um, we're going to videotape. Um, leaving the road, the garbage dump road, into where she is buried. Um, and once we get there, um, uh, there'll be some more commentary, and uh, we'll conclude there. All right? Be, the spade at this point, where will that be? It be, it might be there, 
I'm not quite sure. Where is where? At Darlene's place. At Darlene's? Yes. Did you return it back? Yes, there? I did. Okay. Is, is there anything else you want to say while we're here? You, this is your time. Yeah. Uh, I've done this for the Phoenix to recover her body. Okay. Because she deserves a proper burial. And I've done it for my, my boys as well as myself. And it's my All right. Okay. Anything else you want to say? I'm what? Really sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cause you guys, because I know you. It's your job, and you shouldn't be out here. And Phoenix should be out. Wow. Roaming. Well, we'll get we'll get her up. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. I uh, just how how will we find her in there? How will she be? She will be face up. The uh, the plastic uh, is uh, I wrap her in plastic with a yellow uh, rain jacket, her head being covered with the head part, and the rest of her body will break. Okay. Is, is there any markings on the ground, so indicators? No indicators because we just put her right by, right here. This, I think, I believe it's right here. I, I'm 100% sure now, because I know it's You're 100%? Yes. Okay. Because that's, that was all water here. What? Like, uh, Wes, which way? Do you know, or can you recall which way her head or her, he, head, her feet her head, would be pointing? Her head's here. Oops, sorry. Her head's here. Okay. And then down. Okay. Where are her, her feet? Her feet are here. And her head's right here. And is there anything else in there with her at all? Just the dirt. It'll be covered with. Okay. Uh, the, the, like I said, the, the, uh, the grave. It was about this wide because she's a very, a very small girl. So it's about this wide. We're gonna find her. W trakcie procesu para obwiniała się nawzajem za śmierć Phoenix Sinclair. Oboje zostali uznani za winnych morderstwa pierwszego stopnia i skazani na dożywocie, bez możliwości ubiegania się o warunkowe zwolnienie przez 25 lat. Syn Karla powiedział, że w trakcie ogłoszenia wyroku nie było widać żadnych emocji na twarzach Samanty i Wesa. Żadnego płaczu, żadnego żalu.